Hi everyone, this is Carrick from ACG bringing you today's newest meat for the fire. Today it's the PC game Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter, a budget game that builds itself as an authentic hunting simulation. My only question is, how in the hell do they know? But that being said, the game is a tried and true hunting game. Arm yourself with a weapon of destruction and then go out into the lands and do your damnedest to exterminate everything like a medieval Ted Nugent, sneaking up on dangerous animals as they eat grass and sometimes go to watering holes. Let's see what Carnivore brings to the gamer's table. Up front, I have to admit, you know, I've always been somewhat of a fan of hunting games, so seeing this pop up on Steam was actually pretty exciting for me. A hunting game that's done well allows for the exploring of an aspect of life that many gamers don't experience, don't want to, or can't experience. And then of course, if done poorly, they can rival even Call of Duty and lack of plot bloodletting simulators. Time to see which one this is. As always, it's good to remember that this review is caffeinated, which means eyes wide open like saucers and speech spit out at stupendous speeds. Let's do this. Graphics are up first. First, the word budget brings up ideas of wonky everything from graphics to gameplay. So color me a bit surprised when not only did carnivores look pretty good, but it also had some very acceptable texture work here and there. Though putting the view distance at its farthest brought my 980 GTX to its knees and a rock solid nine frames per second. But being totally honest here, that view slider actually doesn't change much. It just adds extra foliage farther away. Once I put that down at a normal acceptable level, I was getting a steady 30 frames per second at 14. 40p resolution. The texture work on the dinosaurs is actually very good and really probably some of the best I've seen from the recent rash of dinosaur based survival or shoot 'em up games and it surprised me quite a bit in how good they looked. Of course that's not to say everything's perfect. At times you're gonna come around a corner and lo and behold you're gonna see an alien life form like the dreaded floating palm tree which is like any other palm tree but for some reason the developers believe that in the past some trees just existed by floating four feet above the ground and lived off nothing but air. Since the game is pretty much about you and some dinosaurs, there isn't a lot going on graphically other than the landscape itself, dinosaurs, and your steady hands holding death-dealing weapons. All of these look good, actually with the caveat that the dinosaurs may animate well, but they really do love smashing headlong into trees, boulders, and hell, why not the earth, like they inherently know their extinction is coming and they're raging against that extinction machine. But really, for a budget title, it looked very good, and the landscapes were a significant improvement from what I expected. Sound, music, and voice. Sound is up first, and in the end, I guess it's a bit average because while the dinosaurs sound suitably scary, and I actually mean that, playing a level that is based at nighttime and hearing a big old meat eater roar can be a bladder muscle testing affair. The guns though just don't do it for me. There are a couple rifles and all of them but the largest ones just don't seem to have the power and oomph that a dinosaur killing rifle should have. I mean, let's be honest, if you're hunting dinosaurs, you probably want to be armed with a portable version of the guns on some Navy destroyer, not the latest 22 long rifle range ripoff. That being said, the crossbows sound cool, the various environmental effects sound excellent, and man, you know what? Late at night tracking a stegosaurus to a watering hole can be an awesome audio experience through and through. I just wish that some of the guns did have a bit more bottom end. And that brings us to music. This is a hunting game, so hunting quarry is far more important than hearing someone as poorly talented as me experiment with the new and latest VSTI add-on for Fruity Loops. There's almost no music to speak of. The title music is fine, and it's a mix of jungle rhythm with the sounds of a pissed off dinosaur. It's good and doesn't exist anywhere else in the game, which is actually even better. Voice, none. So who gives a crap? Let's move on. Gameplay. This game really cuts to the chase. You have two options. Explore the Avengers-like floating cathedral of death, looking at models of animals you've shot in a virtual showroom, or hunt dinosaurs across a series of massive levels so that you can then fill out your floating cathedral of death with their corpses. Playing the game allows you to pick licenses for particular dinosaurs, locations you want to hunt them in, and your tools of the trade. And I have to say, I was honestly not only surprised, but pleasantly amused and pleased by the number of and effectiveness related to the upgrades. From gun upgrades for steadier shots and less weight, to computer tracking upgrades to help you identify big game, or if dinosaurs have spotted you with their patented now extinct 
DinoVision or track them more easily. The game just has enough upgrades to keep you busy for a while and since some of them lower your overall score, if they help you too much, it can be a fun little game of give and take, deciding if you want to go into the bush like Robert Muldoon and have your own Jurassic Park clever girl moment, or if you go in there fully fleshed out predator style, aiming more for bang for the buck than pure skill outlet. Once you outfit yourself and pick a level, a giant drone throws you haphazardly into the level and you begin. It's a hilarious beginning. It is here though that Carnivores excels. You see, it actually does a pretty good job of a couple things that past hunting games actually don't. Aside from ambient life, dinosaurs don't run around the level like the developers have filled it with spawn nodes. Instead, for many minutes you can see and hear nothing, exploring the land slowly, looking for tracks, or trying to find watering holes. And then once you have, you can set up a place or continue to track out and try to find a dinosaur that fits your current license. Because shooting one without a license does get you gems, which work for upgrades, but doesn't get you much more and you can't take it home with you as every dinosaur has weak spots and as we all know dinosaurs were made even the smallest ones for the most part to be abrams battle tanks of nature you really do need to be very careful and very skilled to hit those spots otherwise you can end up burning through all your rounds and have to go home without killing anything which happened to me a couple times but if you're careful you can set up a headshot or possibly a liver heart or lung shot and successfully take down a bit of nature and history in one sharp bullet report if you beg a kill you can claim it and then you have your massive drone come and suck it up unceremoniously as you effectively treat these kings of the world like nothing more than a hairball to be sucked up by a flying vacuum cleaner. Honestly though, despite a bit too much arcadey feeling at times, it plays extraordinarily well, and it does so for a game that's really mimicking hunting an extinct race. Fun factor, I had a blast guys. Sure, it's a bit arcadey at times, but I'm not going to lie and pretend that hunting a triceratops across the sunset locale of an island a bit too close to an erupting volcano isn't actually really enjoyable. Additionally, since the dinosaurs, or at least some of them at least, will try to kill you by smashing into your head first and eating whatever's left, it's not without danger, and that's also a little bit of an add for the enjoyment factor. There's a very cool feeling here, a almost fancifulness that's both tongue in cheek and yet interlaid with some realism and expectations from the gamer to be attentive that makes carnivores so fun. I mean, it's hunting dinosaurs, it can't be too realistic, but the developers treat it with enough professionalism that the game successfully navigates it's the line between a pure hunting game, which involves sitting in one place for extended periods of time until an animal decides it wants life-giving water and then gets shot in the fucking head for it, and a more visceral affair where those nice animals can smote you without a second's notice and also find you the lowest ugly face on the totem pole of life. It's an absolute blast, to be honest. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never talk about it again rating scale. This is a buy if you like these kind of games, plain and simple. Listen, not everyone likes hunting games. That's a given. But if you do, and you don't mind a fanciful take on the genre that successfully navigates that minefield of fiction and fact to show you a world that isn't just elk and white-tailed deer, I think you can enjoy yourself immensely. Additionally, the fact that it mixes both the item, weapon, and personal upgrades of many hunting games in, and yet keeps the hunt itself engaging, is a kudo for these guys, as some hunting games just don't do that. And that's it for me and my time with Carnivores, the search to become the caveman version of Ted Nugent. If you liked the video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. Share the video on Twitter if you can. Maybe check out the Patreon. Peace out.